Hello, and welcome to English 109. So my name is Professor Parrish. You can call me Miss Parrish. You can call me Rachel. You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> but I am going to be your instructor for English 109 this semester. So this class, English 109, is basically a stepping stone class to English 121, which is college rhetoric and composition. So what this class does is that it helps to reinforce different writing techniques and different skills to get you prepared for the writing that you'll encounter in English 121. So I really like this class. We have a brand new textbook for it, and I really like the textbook. So I'm pretty excited to be starting fresh with this class compared to previous semesters. Um, it's a brand new textbook. So I've restructured this class and I'm pretty excited about it. So what this video is, this introduction video is also going to serve as your video for week one, just kind of explaining where things are in the course and just to go over the syllabus. So on our course homepage, homepage, that's where we are right now. Um, you can see a few things right off the bat. I've got this in student mode so I can see the page just like you all see it. Um, the first thing you'll notice is our textbook is right here on the front of the page. It is Langan English Skills with Readings 10th edition. You will need to get the textbook that looks exactly like this. Um, please make sure it's the with readings English skills and that it's the 10th edition. It's a brand new textbook. It just came out this year. So hopefully we'll be using this for several semesters to come. Like I said, I really, really enjoy the textbook. I think it's set up really easy and user friendly and it has a lot of information in it. So with that being said, um, before we dive into the page and discussing where everything is, um, you'll see that there's a English 109 syllabus here. It's also located in the syllabus section underneath the announcements. Um, the announcements I will post each week where our lecture video is. When I'm done recording this video, I will post it here under announcements and it will also be in our resources page, which is over here on the left and I've got it kind of highlighted here in dark blue. But I'll go over this tab over here on the left hand side after we talk about the syllabus. So English 109, if I'm opening up our syllabus here, uh, let me bring it up here, yep, and show here. Okay, so English 109, you can see my office hours are right here. My office is in E132, but I also work the admissions window on campus um, just to help out there. I'm not having, um, because I might be working admissions window or be working remotely from home, um, with COVID-19, our, our schedule is a lot different than previous semesters. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is through my email, which is shown right here at the top. It's rachel.parish at sic.edu. Um, you can also call my extension. It's um, 2245. My office hours are technically Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. Um, after 4.30, um, just because I will be, for personal reasons, I won't answer any phone calls after 4.30 Monday through Friday or on the weekends, but I do answer my emails. So if you need to get a hold of me, email is the best way because I check it all the time. And then um, by appointment, if you do need to come see me about something, we can schedule an appointment um, to meet and discuss. But usually most everybody's questions are answered through email. Um, now please understand, <laughs> um, even though I am your instructor, I do have somewhat of a life outside of the classroom. So if I don't answer your email on Saturday morning at 8 a.m., it's okay. I'll probably answer it Saturday or Sunday, but I may be away from my computer those days. So I know you're probably not gonna be that student, but I've had students in the past that have been like, why didn't you answer my email as soon as I sent it? And I was like, I was asleep or I was outside or I was helping a family member or something like that. So I know you guys won't do that, but um, I have had students in the past that have had that mentality of, oh, on the weekends, my instructor should, my instructor should answer all my questions. And usually it's during the week which it, when it's the best time to get a hold of me. So the course is set up. It's starting Monday, January 11th, and we end on Friday, May 7th. So May 7th will be our last day of class. Um, it is an online lecture class. So there will be videos each week. So I'll record my lecture videos each week talking about the course. Please watch those. They won't be long, but they are going to be important in that I will discuss the assignments and bring out any important extra information and then we'll have our discussion forum. So I'm not gonna read the catalog description or the objectives word for word. You can look up in the syllabus and read these yourselves, but the idea is basically to help you create writing and improve on techniques in writing to where you will be proficient and ready for English 121. That's my goal with this class, is to make sure that you are capable of doing the writing necessary for the course that will come after this. 
As far as the types of writing we're going to do, you will have four essays that we do in this class. We do description, we do narration, we do compare and contrast, and we do argument. Um, now it may say on here cause and effect. Cause and effect was our previous uh, paper in the old textbook, but I really like how this textbook does description, so I'm gonna switch it to that. Um, the textbook is listed here, in, in the what I've just highlighted. It is available in our bookstore. If there are any supplemental readings or handouts, I will list them on the resources pages of our site. Um, this is how the class breaks down. So the class is out of 1,100 points. Um, I am not one of those teachers that's an all or nothing type of class. I know some science classes or some other classes, it's like, oh, the class is out of 400 points and you have to do great on the midterm and great on the final and that's it. And it's like, oh no, I don't like all the pressure being on a specific assignment. I much rather would like a balanced class where your work each week is important. I don't like fluff assignments. I don't like assignments where they're just fluff and you're just doing them to do them. No, if you're going to take the time to do an assignment, it needs to have a purpose. And so all the assignments we do in this class have a purpose. They connect to something. So I like to spread out the points, making each week worth your while, but also if you're sick one week, and you miss a few assignments, it's not gonna be the end of the world, okay? So if you're sick one week and you're like, oh, I didn't get my discussion form done, it's okay. Now we are gonna talk about staying in the class and late assignments, and I'll get to that shortly, but the idea is that if you miss an assignment or two, it's not gonna be the end of the world. The big thing is don't make that a habit, <laughs> okay? So you have 15 discussion forums, there's going to be two weeks when we don't have a discussion, and that's going to be midterm and final weeks. Uh, everything else is going to have a discussion forum each week. There are four reading responses towards the end of the semester, um, 10 grammar reviews where we review different parts of grammar from our textbook, um, 10 specific textbook assignments that are more on mechanics, and then your essays. You have four essay outlines and topics that are at 25 points each, and I will explain those each week that they are assigned. And then you have four essays, the four papers I was talking about, that are 50 points each, a midterm, a final exam, and a final reflection. And the reflection is just exactly what you think it is. It's just going over what you've learned in the class. So you can see on the grading scale here that if you have 990 points, you'll have an A, and it breaks down from there. Honestly, students either usually get one of three grades in this class. They either get an A, they get a C, and they scrape by, or they fail. And that's just because the people that fail just don't do the assignments or don't withdraw when they need to. So usually everybody else gets a C or higher, which is what you need in this class to move on to English 121. You have to have a C in this class to move forward. Um, and it is very doable. If you just do the assignments and turn them in on time, chances are you will get a C or higher. <laughs> that's my goal. I, I don't want students to fail. I want you all to succeed. But also you have to put in the effort and the work to get that grade. I'm not just gonna hand out a grade to a student. They have to, to complete the work. Now, I said that if you are sick one week, it's not gonna be a big deal. Here's the thing. You need to tell me if you're sick in this class. You need to communicate with your instructor. Um, work online has to be completed on time for credit. I do not do late assignments. And the main reason for that is that you have one to two weeks at least to complete assignments. Like I open up folders ahead of time so that you can work ahead if you want to. Especially towards the start of the semester starts out a little slower and I do that intentionally to give you time to get your textbook, to give you time to get adjusted to online classes, to give you some time to get comfortable. So some students will go ahead and work ahead just because they are comfortable and they feel like they can. Absolutely you can do that. That's perfectly fine. Um, but because I open things up for at least a full week, um, I do not accept late work. Um, I would recommend that you do not procrastinate in this class. Procrastination will be your worst enemy. Um, and I say that because some students will wait till Sunday night and just not get assignments done on time. And they will email me and ask for an extension and I'll say no. You have had all week to do the assignment. Um, it is not my fault as the instructor that you waited until the last minute and something went wrong. So make it a point as a student, and this is a good time management skill, to just try to complete your assignments as early as possible. Obviously that won't happen for various reasons, your job, family, etc. but that's why you have that full week, so that you can take advantage of it and do it when you can. Um, 
you need to have a backup technology in place. Um, obviously, if you're taking this class online, you're probably working from home. Have a backup plan. Have a family member or a friend. Have a library on tap. Have some means of getting to an alternate source if technology fails. Um, and that's something you just need to be prepared for. It's 2021. Online classes have been around for a while. That's just something you have to prep for as an online student. Um, a lot of the classes I took in undergrad and grad school were online. I'm taking grad school classes right now that are online. Um, so I have to be prepared as a student for when things happen. Um, now, granted, life goes on beyond this class. So if you have a medical emergency happen, if you've had um, a family member you have to go take care of at that moment, or if you or something happens or you're sick, we can handle that on an individual basis. However, you need to communicate with me. If you email me a week after an assignment's due and you're like, oh, hey, I had COVID a week ago, I'm going to say I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's just the truth because you've had all this time to communicate and send an email or send a text to my email saying that you weren't going to be able to do this. Um, you have to be responsible as a student. We're all adults. We all have to handle this in an adult professional manner. So you need to be able to communicate with me when stuff's happening or I won't know. And as much as I'd like to give people the benefit of the doubt, communication is essential. So make sure that you're communicating when things happen to keep me in the know and that way I can help meet your meet you halfway to get you the, the extensions that you might need if something happens. So our attendance policy is also in our town student handbook as well as in the link below. If you do have an ADA accommodation, there is an extension there you can contact. Our exams are not timed, so I don't see there shouldn't be any time concerns being an issue in the class. Um, but if you do need an accommodation, then you can contact that extension. And then we do utilize this um, technology called Starfish. And that's just if I see you're struggling in the class, then I will send your advisor a Starfish saying, hey, so and so struggling. And they may reach out to you to ask if you have any questions. We do have an English tutor on campus. Her name is Miss Lane. She's super nice. She's so sweet. Um, and she is on campus from 8 to noon every day of the week. And she's also available through email. So um, if you go online and type in tutoring at sic.edu, then she'll come up and be available for you. So that is a, a big possibility if you need it. And Miss Lane is wonderful. She's a great person to look at your papers, to look at homework. Like she's a great resource. And so I encourage you all, please utilize her because um, she is a paid tutor. So she needs people to see her, right? Um, now below this, this is just an outline of what we're gonna do each week in the class. So you know to prepare. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have a spring break this semester because of COVID regulations. However, because we don't have a spring break week, that means we get out of school a week early. So it's a little bit of a compromise. Um, instead, we're gonna get out May 7th instead of May 14th. So pros and cons, but the good news is we get out a week early from school, which I'm sure most of you are all, that's one extra week for summer vacation, if that's your thing. So um, you can look at the outline here. Our finals week will end on May 7th, which is a Friday. And so that'll be the last day that things happen. And then assignments for finals week will uh, open up on May 3rd. And then we have our supplemental page and that's pretty much it for the class. Um, as far as where things are located, on this left hand side, you can see various links here. Um, your grade book, I will keep this updated uh, every week. Like I'm not one of those instructors that you're gonna have to be there like, what's my grade? I don't know. Now I'm gonna update that so you know every week what you're making in the course. Um, I'm pretty fast on grade turnarounds, so you should know each week what your progress is in the class. Um, I won't click on the link now because it's gonna show me everyone's grades, which right now it's zero because we don't have an assignment due yet. But your grade book will just be for you. Um, this email link, if I click on email, it's gonna show you everybody in the class. Um, my email is always the darker gray one and you can click the box and then go to open email and it will let you type out an email and send it to me. Now, this email is gonna to go to my Falcon Mail. When I respond to you, it's gonna to go to your Falcon Mail. So if you have not set up your SIC Falcon Mail, I would go to the library and tell them in the online learning section that you need to set up your email and they should be able to help you with that. But that's how our email setup works. Uh, resources. 
is right above Gradebook. Um, your resources, I'm going to post the link to this video right here. You can see on the right hand side under documents that there's our syllabus and for week two there's already our guidelines for paper one. You can scroll down and see all of the guidelines and documents that I have uploaded for each week. Um, they are all there for your convenience and they'll stay there throughout the entire class. And then all of our lecture videos will be housed on the left hand side of this page. Uh, the two most important links for this class, the two most important, are assignments and discussion forum. The discussion forum, like I said, you'll have a discussion forum assignment every week except for midterms and finals. So you can see here that there's forums and what this is, is that since we can't meet in class face to face, this is our discussion as a class. This is our participation um, for talking to one another. And from myself taking online classes, I can honestly say that I've had friends that they're not talkers. They are not somebody that would raise their hand in class and speak out loud. But when they have a chance to write in a forum here and express their opinions, they'll do it. So I do think it's a cool thing that if you are someone that you don't like speaking up in class or you don't want to, maybe you're embarrassed to speak in front of people or you don't like public speaking, that's fine. This is a way you can kind of voice your opinions about our assignments and about our topics in a way that lets you have a voice, which I think is pretty cool. So you can see that for this first week, our discussion forum is just to basically talk about yourself. It's kind of like an icebreaker. We're just introducing like who you are, why are you at SIC, what, um, what is your strength as a writer? And yes, you have to put something down. Um, I, I get frustrated when students are like, oh, I'm not a good writer. I don't have a strength. I'm like, yes, you are. If you've made it out of high school and you've made it to this point, you have some strength as a writer. It may be that you're good at brainstorming ideas. It may be that you're good at an introduction. It may be that you're good at writing conclusions or, or transitioning from one spot to another. Or maybe you're good at research. Or maybe you're good at coming up with titles of pages or papers. Um, everybody has a strength. It's playing up those strengths and it's improving where you're weak at that I think this class is gonna focus on. And then letting me know what you hope that this class will help you with in terms of becoming a better writer. So that's our discussion forum and there's kind of directions on here. Um, your discussion forums each week are worth 20 points. 10 points is your post and they're always due on Fridays. And then your responses are always due on Sunday and you have to do at least two. And each response is worth five points. So the whole thing is worth 20 points. Um, if for some reason, and I've noted on here and I'm gonna highlight where I'm noting it. If you can't post by Friday night, I will accept posts on Saturday and Sunday of each week. I'll take five points off, but I will accept your post Saturday or Sunday. So please make sure you go ahead and post Saturday or Sunday. If you can't make it by Friday, um, there'll just be that deduction. Now, after the Sunday of each week, I won't accept any more posts for credit. But that's just, if you can't make it by Friday night for your initial post, I will take the post on Saturday or Sunday. So you at least get to interact with the discussion forum and talk to your classmates. All right, the most important link in the class is the assignments link. And that's this right here. So one note, this is very, very important. Don't rely on this little gray box. This gray box is deceptive. It is problematic and I hate it, but I can't get rid of it. It is embedded into the website. I can't do anything about it. It's problematic because this little gray box will only ever show you two assignments, just two. And down in week one, you can see that you only have one assignment. But in week two, you have two. There will be some weeks where you have three assignments, but it'll only show you two in this box. It's so frustrating, I don't know why. So please, when you go to the assignments page, when you click on the assignments page, scroll down, scroll down to the week, and you can see the assignment, all right? now. I have already uploaded weeks one and two for you, so you can go ahead and start week one and two anytime you want. You can do, the only thing do this first week is the discussion forum. I want you to get your textbook and I want you to read chapter one, which is pages two through 26. It's just talking about the basics of writing, um, but there are things in that first chapter that will be presented later on in your midterm. So get your textbook, watch this video, <laughs> which if you're watching this now, then you've already done it and then do discussion form number one. That's the only assignment for week number one. That's just to get us all acquainted. But if you want to, you can go ahead and do week number two. 
You can go ahead and do the grammar review. You can go ahead and do week two's discussion if you want to. Um, I've opened that up so you can work ahead if you want. Um, and the next week, I'll have posted the week two lecture video where I'll talk about our textbook assignments and I'll talk about grammar review number one. All right. So I'm going to go back to this course homepage. It's going to take me back to the beginning of the class. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, I promise I do not bite. <laughs> I am happy to answer any and all questions. Um, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There are only questions um, that need answers. <laughs> so please don't feel embarrassed or afraid to ask a question if you want to know. I have probably heard every possible online learning question that you can imagine. I've taught online for seven or eight years, so I've been through multiple technology changes. Like it's a, It can be a learning curve, especially if this is your first online class. But I promise you, once you get the swing of things and once you get the hang of the drop boxes and how they work, then it will all make a lot of sense. And next week, I'll show you how those drop boxes work. But if you decide to work ahead and you have troubles, please just email me and let me know, and I'm happy to answer your questions. But in any case, I'm super excited to have you all in the class. I'm really excited to be teaching this semester online, and I want to thank you all for joining me in taking this course. So welcome to English 109. It's going to be a great semester. It's 2021. It's got to be good, right? <laughs> so knock on wood. <laughs> so in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with week two of English 109.